and out. Alright boys and girls, welcome back to the official Egg Footy Tipping Competition Round 2 predictions. And it's been a crazy opening round to the season. Me personally, it's been a pretty, pretty rough week as you can imagine. First my Lions get embarrassed by the Port Adelaide Power at their home ground, and then Kick It to Scoops gets blocked by the AFL on copyright grounds. So I haven't had much to look forward to this week, but I'm still going to put on a brave face, I'm going to face the music for my team's performance. I'll get into that a little bit later. But first, let's have a look at my tips overall. Uh, I did pretty good, 5 out of 9. Now there was a little bit of debate regarding the draw. I put out a poll on Twitter asking if it should count as a correct tip because both ESPN footy tips and the official AFL tipping website both listed it as a correct tip. So it's 5 out of 9 or 4.5 out of 9 depending on what you think, but the majority consensus was that it would count. So I'm counting it because god damn it, I need all the help I can get. I think I'm ranked about 128 in my own tipping competition and I feel very silly for actually putting in a contingency plan if I ended up winning my own tipping competition. At least we can establish right away that that's never gonna happen. Speaking of the tipping competition, here's the top 10 on the screen right now. Well done to all these people. You're doing great. I'm proud of you. Hopefully you can maintain your position throughout the season. It's only round one. Tipping competitions aren't won in March, you know. But yeah, well done to these people. And with that being said, let's get into my predictions for round two. Thursday night, we've got Carlton taking on Geelong at the MCG. This is an interesting game. I've got Geelong winning by about 20 points. Carlton are going to have a chip on their shoulder after that draw. They had no business coughing up that win. They're going to come into this game really fired up as are Geelong. You know, Geelong had every opportunity to close that game, seal the deal, get the margin out to beyond reach for Collingwood, but they didn't. They ended up losing. Chris Scott's not going to stand for that. He's also not going to stand for the horrible MCG turf, evidently. Despite how good Carlton are as a footy club, I think Geelong's going to come out and win by about 20 points. And oh, sweet Jesus. Next up, we've got Brisbane Lions and Melbourne at the Gabba. Now, I want to address this very quickly. I mentioned last week that no matter what happens, I'm going to back my Lions in every week. And after, the, after their performance last week, this is a really good test of that rule. Even though I have absolutely no confidence in my team whatsoever, even though I'm going to be at that game on Friday night, pre presumably watching in horror as we get demolished by the Melbourne Demons, despite having literally no confidence in them whatsoever, I'm still tipping them because they're my footy club, they're my Lions, and god damn it, I'm not going to abandon them after one loss. So yeah, I have tipped Brisbane, even though Melbourne are probably going to win this. You know, but, uh, but you know, joking aside, Brisbane beating Melbourne, it's not out of the question. I hope they're going to be really fired up after last week's performance. And you know, Brisbane now have the recipe to beat Melbourne after that semi-final last year. Melbourne's lost Cozzy Pickett. It's going to be interesting to see how Brisbane adapt to that and if they can capitalize on it. And you know, I had I had absolutely no confidence in Brisbane Lions going into last year's elimination final. And we all know what happened after that. So, you know, maybe, just maybe, Joe Danaher can come back again and pull the rabbit out of his rectum and pull out a win for the Lions, but even though like, I, I have no <laughs> I have no confidence whatsoever in them, but I'm still going to tip them anyway because they're my team. Saturday, 12.45 at the MCG, we've got Collingwood and Port Adelaide. I don't know if I've been influenced by Port Adelaide's dominant performance against my team last week, but I've got them getting up over to Collingwood Magpies, believe it or not. Every week there's going to be one game where you think one team's going to win, but the other team comes out and upsets them and ruins your tipping for the week. I think Port Adelaide's going to be that bogey team. I think they're going to rocket right back up into the top eight this year. A lot of us are guilty for riding off Port Adelaide after their bad year last year, myself included, but they've really proved everybody wrong with their round one performance, and I think they're going to take it to Collingwood in, in round two. You're probably going to disagree with this heavily. 89% uh, of people on the website think Collingwood are going to win. But me, I'm in the 11%. I've, I think Port Adelaide's going to get up. Saturday, 25th of March at Adelaide Oval. 
The Adelaide Crows versus Richmond. Uh, like I said before, Carlton's going to have a chip on their shoulder after the draw, and I think the exact same thing is going to be true for Richmond. Unfortunately for Carlton, they're not versing an Adelaide Crows side who got beaten by the GWS Giants last week. So I think Richmond's going to come out firing. I think they're going to beat Adelaide comfortably by about 30 odd points. You know, Richmond did really, really good at the end there to salvage a draw, and that's why I think Richmond's going to get the W over Adelaide. 625 at Marvel Stadium, we've got the Clash of the Century, Western Bulldogs versus the rampaging St. Kilda Football Club. Now I'm going to go ahead and exclusively reveal that the St. Kilda Saints are going to get up against, <laughs> against the Bulldogs in a, a tight contest, maybe about 10 points or so. Western Bulldogs didn't look very good last week, Rory Lobb underperformed heavily, uh, and St. Kilda on the other hand, they look pretty good. Ross the boss and his St. Kilda Saints are really fighting an uphill battle right now with all the injuries they've got. That being said, I think St. Kilda are going to get up against the Bulldogs based on how badly the Bulldogs performed last week. And I have it on good authority that St. Kilda are going to go up to 2-0. Optus Stadium, 6.30. Fremantle versus North Melbourne. Now, as good as North Melbourne played last week against West Coast, I've got Frio winning this game because, you know, Optus Stadium, Western Australia, it's it's the hardest road trip in footy. That home ground advantage for both Frio uh, and West Coast Eagles can't be overstated, especially for a developing side like North Melbourne. And you know, Fremantle didn't play their best last week, but they're still a talented team. We know what they're capable of. I think Frio is still going to be a bit slow starting out, uh, but I think at the same time, they should be able to take care of North Melbourne. And now, Sunday. At the SCG, we've got Sydney Swans versus Hawthorne. And I am so impressed with Sydney and how they've responded to the grand final last year. While she was on commentary, Kelly Underwood mentioned it about a hundred times, but Sydney were really impressive last week against the Gold Coast Suns. And I think given how Hawthorne performed last week against Essendon, which I'm going to get into in a second, again, like St. Kilda, I think Sydney's going to prove me wrong and get out to a really good start. You know, like I said last week, Sydney have defied history by bouncing back after a big grand final loss. We, we saw it in 2014, and I think we'll see it again this year. Despite what the punters think, Sydney ain't going anywhere. And I think Sydney are going to continue their revenge tour with a win over the Hawks. Next up, we've got Essendon and Gold Coast at Marvel Stadium. And Essendon were incredible last week, and they made Hawthorne look like absolute shit. Brad Scott has got the boys firing, and I think this might just be the year that they get the elusive finals win and break the curse. On the other hand, Gold Coast didn't look the best against Sydney last week. So it's going to be interesting to see how they respond. It's only round one. It's no time to panic yet. But I think in this case, Essendon are going to be too strong, which sucks. I'm rooting for the Gold Coast. I want them to succeed. I want them to make finals for the first time. But their performance last week didn't give me a lot of confidence. So I'm going with Essendon for this one. Finally, we've got GWS taking on West Coast at Optus Stadium. No question about it. I've got GWS going over against West Coast. You know, like I said, it's a hard road trip going up to Optus Stadium, but you know, West Coast has been really, really struggling. Not only last week, but all of 2022 as well. They had every opportunity to beat North Melbourne last week and they couldn't get the job done. I think I'm very comfortable with predicting GWS getting up against West Coast. And there you have it, round two. Let's see how accurate I am. Judging by my round one form, not very accurate, but that's that's neither here nor there. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, join my Discord, all that jazz, and I'll see you all in round three.